ancient travellers left behind their golden travel accounts in the form of travelogues for the future generations to read, learn and delight. We bring those to you in our audio series, Travelogues in Time. In this edition, we have the fourth part of the travel accounts of John Fryer from Britain, who visited India from 1673 to 1682. In the third part, we dealt on the arrival of John Fryer to India, his professional involvement in medicine and Indian medicine system, and his observation on India, his observation on cutting precious stones, Indian pharmacists, remedial medicines, and accounts of Indian doctors' work. Friar also described rules of India like the Marathas, Mughals and the colonial powers from Europe. The program is written and presented by Dr. Ranjita Datta, Professor Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. Nor indeed are pretensions wanting. They holding here their right by conquest, they boasting they have in a manner subdued the natives, which is no hard matter, since this region of Malabar is divided into several small signories or arch rebels against the Zamorin of Calicut, only paying some slight acknowledgments of his supremacy as their bishop and joining with him against the great Mughals, else striving to supplant each other having a government most like aristocracy of any in the East, each state having a representative, he to act according to the votes of the nigher gentry in full assembly, which as they interfere with one another. Interests, the weakest have always been ready to call in help, for which reason the Dutch were first permitted to rear castles to secure the sea coasts, which they have made so good use of, as if to bring it under their yoke, the great Mughals not discouraging them in the least. Keeping our course, we left Cochin to the southward, once a famous mart of the Portugals, since wrested from the and made impregnable by Dutch. Friar, describing the city of Cochin, said, From whence I went to observe the town, which is miserably poor and straggling, though at the heart of it a double row of cottage opened their shops of wares, which consisted of pepper, turmeric, ginger, cassia, lignum, the lesser cardamoms, tobacco and hubble bubble canes, the product of this coast, as also betel nuts, greatest grain from this place to Surat, to be reaped by them. He described the population, the money changers, traders, aristocracy, women and peasants of Cochin. Friar remarked that they have hospitals here for cows and are charitable to dogs, providing for them abroad, but not suffer them to defile them within doors, being more merciful to beasts than men. Friar admired Calicut and praised the climate and people. He said, a good long bazaar, with trash, with ripe fruit, another with opium and spices of this coast, changers and dwellers. The citizens are urbane, being trained up to commerce and trade gone to Goa. We are also told of the vibrant international trade of Calicut, from where the commodities were transported to the Red Sea along the coasts or to the Gulf of Persia, to be carried onwards to Aleppo, Constantinople and Venice. Friar remained in the East for eight years, returning to England in August 1682. He was presumably in practice after his return to England. He was elected as a Fellow of the Royal Society in 1697 and a review entitled An Abstract with Some Reflections on a New Account of East, India and Persia was published in the Society's Philosophical Transactions of 1698. In the summer of that year, he got married. Friar died on 31st March 1733 at his Bread Street home in the parish of All Hallows in London. 
You just heard the fourth part of the travel accounts of John Fryer, the British traveller who visited India in the 17th century. Travelogues in time. Travelogues in time.